Good afternoon. My name is Oscar Ramirez. Today we're going to talk about chatbots. I'm going to give you a brief overview and high-level introduction to chatbots and what they are. Okay? Why they are important today or why I think they're important today. Then I'll give you some trends for bots on 2017 and beyond. And finally, if we get the chance, I'll give you a quick overview or a quick demo on how to create a chatbot and deploy it uh, pretty quickly. First of all, what is a chatbot? Chatbot is nothing more than a computer program designed to simulate an intelligent conversation with one or more humans using what we call conversational interfaces. Right? A bot, um, as it's uh, known, is more of a lightweight app within a particular messenger platform, such as Facebook Messenger or WeChat, most commonly. The conversational interfaces uh, may be voice, text, or even micro user interfaces uh, today. And some, more of the, some of the more sophisticated uh, bots use uh, natural language processing, machine learning to provide better feedback for users. Others, though, the majority of them follow simple workflows prompted by predetermined keywords. The first chatbot ever created was named Eliza, and it was built in 1966. Here's a sample conversation with Eliza. Uh, Eliza's key method of operation, copied by chatbot designers ever since, involves the recognition of one words or phrases, as you can see from the uh, conversation in here itself, uh, in the input, and the output of corresponding pre-prepared, pre-programmed responses that can move on the conversation forward in an apparently meaningful way. That is, if you said, for example, something about your mother, the bot may, may ask you a question, something like, well, tell me more about your family. And then you think, well, you know, I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. Thus, an illusion of understanding is generated, even though the processing involved has been merely superficial. Elisha showed that such an illusion is surprisingly easy to generate because human judges, us, are so ready to give the benefit of the doubt when conversational responses are capable of being interpreted as intelligent. It is important to you for, for you as a developer to be aware of this technology as it will become more prevalent as years go by and as businesses realize the cost savings when implementing this technology. Note in the infographic, for example, the improvement in the banking bot responses projected between now and 2022 and also note the cost savings for businesses on the interactions with bots versus actually using humans for customer support or cost centers or even implementing very simple banking transactions. These, this slide, these are uh, slide shows you case studies that highlight the effectiveness achieved even today with bots. It's all about client engagement and, conver and conversion rates. Now, at the bottom one, for example, for just eat, for a restaurant, a chatbot that they that they uh, implemented increased their uh, conversion rates by 266 percent. Well, how do we get here? A conversation is the most natural form of communication. Right? We you put two people together with a cup of coffee, and the first thing they're going to do is going to chat. And technology has been around for decades, as, uh, as you showed, 1966 being the first bot. Uh, but advances in computer power and artificial intelligence have made bots more effective and more affordable. Just to give you one stat, in 2017, 35.6 million Americans will use a voice-activated assistant device at least once a month. That's a jump of 128.9% over last year. 70% of those users will be using Amazon Echo, 23%. Google Home. Another important development is that bots can run in existing platforms, such as Messenger or WeChat, hence freeing potential bot developers, perhaps us, from having to build expensive platforms to support bot activity. So you can quickly create a bot and the whole world can use it. And you don't have to spend a cent. Um, the next four slides are going to show you some stats on smartphone use that are giving us this, uh, this uh, environment where bots, I think, are going to be developed uh, very quickly and is gonna, they're going to grow exponentially. Uh, for example, this shows you the number of monthly apps download, downloaded in the U.S. Note, 
that only that 51% of you smartphone users don't allow to download any apps. They just work with the phone, the apps that they have on their phones. This other chart shows you the number of apps used per day by US smartphone users. Note that about 72% of users use six apps or less. How does that compare with what you use? Think about it. How many apps do you use per day? So as the first uh, line there repeats what I showed you on the, on the graphs, but in the last 10 years, digital growth has shifted to mobile, as we all know. And within mobile, communication is the most prevalent use for our phones, specifically messaging. Global internet users, there's approximately 3.5 billion of them, and the, they're growing at 4.5% year over year. Within this impressive monthly average users, uh, monthly average users these platforms have, it is an obvious choice for businesses to engage their customers when there's where they spend most of their time. To boot, in April 2016, Facebook made it easier for bot developers to deploy their software in Facebook Messenger. And the platform has grown, the number of bots in that platform have grown to 100,000 as of September 2017. The industries that will benefit from this, from these trends will be most like mostly the industries that do a lot of customer service, customer interaction, customer engagement, conversions, e-commerce, insurance, healthcare. But you could use a variety of, uh, uh, you could see a variety of use cases for them. Considering, so I would uh, challenge you to consider including bot technology when designing and implementing websites and recommend that your company or clients consider bots for their interaction with customers. With bots, you can increase customer engagement at a lower cost, increase conversion rates, and achieve stronger product loyalty. Having said that, oh, one more thing. I want to show you a quick demo, but first I want to just show you the, the steps that uh, bot developers would engage in when actually creating and deploying a bot. First, you with the business would identify the business use cases for which you would use a bot. You would define the tasks that your bot needs to perform. Then use the power of natural language processing to identify the customer's intent. The intent is the important part. Intent defines the context in which the conversa of the conversation. What does the user want? How can we map this, this intent to an actual action? Uh, and then you want to define a dialogue flow, right, to manage the conversation flow. How, what steps do you want to take as the user interacts with you? And where do you want to, maybe you can define uh, specific points where you want to invoke custom business logic or make REST endpoints or right, you know, invoke your routes on the back end. Then test your conversation as you build it. Deploy it to all the channels your customers love, Slack, Messenger, WeChat, whatever, uh, or the web. And then measure and learn its effectiveness. Many of the platforms that, that, uh, where you can implement your chatbots provide you statistics on hits and misses on the words that the user actually types, and you can, actually, you can uh, improve your algorithms. So let's look at a chatbot. And let's hope that this works well. Here, I, I just created a, um, or went to a website that, uh, this way, that allows you to quickly create uh, chatbots. Basically, these are two chatbots I created in the platform but if you look at their dash uh, at their bot store, they give you a variety of templates that you can use to start. Right? I selected a couple of them just to see how things how things are, and there's one that I tried to implement in the Slack this afternoon, and some people noticed. And uh, basically, it gives you a nice way of you understanding the flow of your bot, all the different business logic, right? Each of these steps include the instructions in which you know, what, what are you going to expect from the user? What are the response? What do you do once the response comes in? What is the next note that you're supposed to hit? Right? So the connections show you the logic. This one's uh, pretty straightforward. If you, the one thing I wanted to show you in this trivia box, the tri this is a trivia game, right? So you just, uh, you say, I'm ready to play, and it's going to ask you questions, and you're going to enter either true, false, or an actual answer. Uh, the first, all you're going to do is select difficulty, and then from there on, uh, basically, you're hitting Node.js endpoints. 
the Node.js endpoints are going are to give you the, the, the questions. Another bot here to show you in a demo is uh, this restaurant guy. This one has more of a customer service type of thing. Uh, welcome. Um, this is going to ask you whether you want a reservation. Do you want to see a menu? Do you want to contact us? In the platform, you can actually test your bot. As you can hear, see here, say hi. Thanks for contacting Antonio's restaurant. Please select from the options below, blah, blah, blah. You can click on view menu. You've seen these in many items, right? So this is what I'm talking about, the micro UI. Uh, one thing that, um, that has been mentioned to us uh, many a times when we use React, right? So you create your components as small as possible. Uh, this is probably one of the reasons, too. You can take, if you have your, real, your comp React components small enough, I, s I guess you could actually include them in these micro UIs, as well as in your web UI and in your other, whatever other platforms you implement your, your, your UIs. <coughs> um, and finally, to quickly show you how you can go from actually coding and, and, and uh, testing your, your bot, very, a very few, um, where's my other uh, Sorry about that. Um, let me show you that with a few lines of code. I'm not going to show you the lines of code because I didn't put the item in there. But where is it? I got a return here. This is what everybody fears. In the Aviado guy that we did the uh, thing, I entered uh, five lines of code, and the bot was implemented in here. And all I had to add was, um, where's my, where in the, well, anyway. And that's the, I was going to show you lines of code, but I can't get it, and I think I'm out of time. That's all my tech talk.